and mounting the variable capacitor <coughs> turned out not too difficult to do. Uh, what you really need to do is unsolder a lead going to the mass of the variable capacitor and then two leads going to well this lead goes to the body of the variable capacitor then you need to unsolder two leads each one going to one part of the variable capacitor you see here also notice there's a very very thin copper wire that goes from this lead to this lead on the variable capacitor um, it is the lead which comes off this coil which is wound around a ferrite core so um, the necessary care should be taken not to break this tiny little wire uh, although I suspect you could you could possibly replace it by another wire if you solder a new one here still it's delicate and you should be wary of not breaking it also although I can't see it there is probably a connection coming from the other side of the coil going between this impregnated cardboard and then making a contact with the mass of the variable capacitor through this lead or this contact uh, this is actually not a, not a lead I think but just a, a piece of wadding or whatever it's it's not important so anyway there you go uh, now the problem is when I when I look inside here there I can't see any lead coming from the antenna coil so it's a bit of a mystery right now uh, how it is connected to the radio as a whole uh, but since it is completely sealed and riveted I'm counting on the fact that the lead the lead on the right is sufficiently protected against breaking or anything like that in any case I'm not going to unmount it it's way too delicate actually to do so and I don't actually need to unmount it to clean the variable capacitor just one last interesting detail on this variable capacitor you see these two screws and underneath those screws there is a, a, a flimsy piece of mica and on top of it are two copper contacts and underneath the mica there is another copper contact so in effect I think that you could uh, tighten or release these screws and by doing that have them act as a a capacitor hmm. yes a capacitor mounted in parallel with the variable capacitor okay interesting detail so uh, I'm going to clean this up uh, I'm going I unmounted the battery holder so and that's in the process of being cleaned and then I'll do some general cleaning on the chassis itself I'm going to measure out a couple of parts like the IF coils and uh, this this choke coil just to be certain that it's still good. originally the variable capacitor of the Westinghouse 
uh, is attached via three screws and a space holder of this shape and height to the chassis and in fact the space holder is metal so um, it is uh, insulated from the chassis itself with some rubber mounts or some grommets like uh, some of you call it and uh, but as you can see the original grommet is toast um, it, it crumbles to dust so I went to the local DIY shop and uh, unfortunately I couldn't find any sort of grommet that would do the trick so I bought something else instead which is a big rubber mount like this which is springy it's rubber and uh, I'll cut out a round shaped well you could say the top of a grommet out of it and uh, on the other side of the chassis I'll use this rubber ring which is black instead of white but that doesn't really matter because nobody is going to see it and I'm going to fit uh, I'm going to fit this uh, over the spacer like this yeah uh, it's a bit of a tight fit but uh, I imagine that if you put this and a piece of this stuff around the spacer like this, you see, um, it'll be sufficient. And I'll use a piece of heat shrink around the top half of the screw to insulate the screw itself of the chassis too. Although really that isn't that isn't necessary actually because uh, the space holder is going to be insulated anyway. Uh, so what I am going to do is to put a, a bit of heat shrink around the spacer itself just in order to make sure that it doesn't make any sort of contact with the chassis. So uh, that's what I'll do and uh, right now I'm uh, gearing up to attach the uh, capacitor network which I replicated to the chassis namely in this area of this okay this is where I'm at for the moment I remounted the variable capacitor and instead of using uh, a piece of the white spacer the big white spacers that I bought these I used uh, the I used the small black spacers uh, back and front as you can see hopefully if I can make it focus well as you can see there's a, a tiny black washer a rubber washer at the front and at the back of the screw and the metal spacer which is clenched between those washers um, has a, a coat of uh, shrink wire wrap shrink uh, coating over it so that it doesn't make contact with the chassis at all back or front or even in the middle uh, I don't know why they did that although I can guess they did it because they wanted to reduce the amount of vibration that went into the variable capacitor although there's very little give there is some give but not much anyway um, I think the main reason why they did it was because they wanted to insulate the variable capacitor from the chassis and that's it so that's what I did 
then I mounted as you can see the new capacitor network which I built and as you can see I uh, placed it here and uh, I used tiny little black wires I think they are 24 gauge to uh, wire it to the necessary or the well the original positions where the original uh, capacitor network was connected before I did that I I drew a little schematic of the connections so that I was sure how I would have to rewire it and uh, it turned out okay um, I chamfered the corner of the PCB uh, to indicate position one just so that I wouldn't confuse any of the connections so in effect uh, uh, the lowest pin here is pin 1 the highest one is 7 so 1 2 3 4 etc and I connected them in the right position on the tube on the IF can and on the other tube although I said I wouldn't uh, replace every part in it I just couldn't resist changing the last capacitor that I could see at least uh, which is here uh, on this uh, parallel with this resistance now uh, there are just a few more capacitors uh, on this radio but unfortunately those capacitors are, are in the two IF cans you see there now really I don't feel like messing with those IF cans so I'm going to postpone replacing the capacitors in those cans until I'm sure that they uh, do not allow me to tune the radio if I see that there is trouble with trying to align the radio I might still change those capacitors last time I also showed you this uh, fuse which I built in and I'm downright glad I did uh, just in case you know when you work with AC you're never quite certain if uh, some trouble is going to pop up and cause a huge short somewhere so yeah I'm mighty pleased I did that uh, I wired in temporarily a few electrolytics until the definitive ones arrive uh, just so when I have the last missing tube uh, because you remember one of the tubes uh, pins broke off the, I think it was the 1U5 uh, when I have a replacement tube uh, we'll give a shot at restarting this radio and I'm just as anxious and as impatient as you are to hear it run so that's it for now uh, I didn't do uh, anything else except a little cleaning here and there uh, I removed most of the corrosion from uh, the battery which ran out here so uh, I polished you could say roughly the copper surface so that most of the corrosion is gone I didn't want to go too deep because as you can see the metal is quite pitted and I didn't want to add to the pitting so yeah there you go uh, let me see am I missing out on something oh yeah this connection of the antenna coil was loose and I don't know whether it was a previous owner or not but this wire which is supposed to go to ground which you see here uh, was actually just pushed inside this cardboard holder and wasn't connected to anything 
So if this radio worked, I'm quite certain it wouldn't have worked. Uh, it would not have worked quite well. You know, but okay, probably the previous owner wasn't an, an electrician or somebody with with some basic knowledge of electronics. Oh yeah, one last remark. I'm really starting to hate this red paint they use on the radio because um, you know they even managed to get some of it on the AC wire. Ah, this is really dirty stuff. I mean, if you're going to repaint something, then at least try to do a good job of it. Don't just spray where you feel like it. Ah, well. Anyway, I cleaned the wire as well as I could. But I did uh, order a new AC wire. Because I think I will replace this one. Anyway, the rubber of the wire, although probably still functional, uh, feels quite stiff. So I don't think it will take long before it starts to actively crumble so yeah i ordered a new wire but just for a quick test i think this one will still do so that's where we stand with the radio so stay tuned for the next update